I certainly think it's a kind of uh, populist revolution uh, that's taken place in America. It took place uh, in Britain over Brexit, although the analogy can't be stretched too far. And it's taking place in various ways in Europe too. Can I push you? Is it economic or is it cultural? Because you write quite a lot about identity mm. and culture and multiculturalism. Is it that that people are objecting to or is it economic conditions? I think it's both. I think economics plays a very important part as we've often, as we've heard several times over the last 24 hours, a lot of people have felt left behind economically. But I personally think the cultural thing is of supreme importance. I think this uprising is against um, a, 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 an, a, an entire establishment uh, comprising politics, um, the law, uh, the media, uh, the financial world, which rightly or wrongly, uh, many millions of people feel has been a kind of conspiracy against them that they've been pursuing an ideological agenda which not only bears no relation to their lives, the lives of ordinary people, but has stigmatised ordinary people for daring to do stuff like want to be proud of and share in a national identity uh, which they recognise, which is pinned in uh, a specific culture and a specific history. For that, they have been smeared and libelled as racist, as xenophobic, as every kind of phobe. And for the first time in Brexit and now in this American election, they've actually found that they can have the power to challenge that establishment. Simon Sharma, discuss. Well, I don't disagree with Melanie's point about the cultural component. Um, uh, uh, sorry about that. I'm getting a feedback here, but um, probably getting a feedback from Melanie. But um, I don't disagree with the cultural component being really very, very important. Um, but I think it's um, disingenuous to say that this election was not about race. Uh, the racial component was incredibly important. Um, economics, I, I actually think less so. Um, unemployment rates in some of the most intensely Trump states were 4.2, 4.6, 4.8. It's absolutely right to say that people's sense of being economically unequal is not necessarily always to be equated with unemployment rates. And that sense of being left behind is genuinely a burning grievance. It has to be said that there are long-term structural issues, the digitization of work, robotics, and so on, that are not going to be in Trump's hands to correct. Old steel mills and factories are not coming back. But it's really weird to me how we pussyfoot around the kind of malodorous, toxic element of race, which has played an incredibly important part of this. Anti-Semitism has long been part of populism. It was nakedly part of populism in the early 20th century. Even today, there were sinister references by the likes of Jeff Sessions to uh, George Soros, who was singled out as particularly odious figure in a kind of international banking conspiracy. Melanie knows very well what these anti-Semitic dog whistle tunes are like. This too is part of populism. We're facing, look everyone, we're facing a cataclysmic moment. Melanie's right to say it's a populist revolt. It, it's nothing to do with conservative Republican politics. It amuses me to hear right. Eric Cantor imagine that things are going to go on as they always right. did and the Republican Let Party will restrain Donald Trump. Let me put these to Melanie. Let me, they won't. They won't. Why let, should, why let, should let he let Let me put them? these to Melanie. Let me put these to Melanie. What, what, do, you, what do you hear when you hear that point? Uh, Simon, calm down, dear. Um, race and anti-Semitism. I don't want to calm down. Don't patronise me. It's and not a moment for calm. It's not a moment Clearly. for calm. It's a moment for contesting what seems to be a very dangerous point in American history. Okay. George Washington, 220 ready? years ago in a farewell address, warned against despotism, and that's what we're facing. Let me let, let Melanie speak. Go. I think that uh, there are noxious elements around which are in, indeed very worrying. You talk about anti-Semitism. Um, clearly, some of the people supporting Mr. Trump are anti-Semites and racists. Um, but that is also true of people on the left. And I think that there is a kind of, you know, it's called dog whistle, dog whistle politics. But I think there's a kind of dog whistle 
uh, about uh, Mr. Trump as well. There is no sign that he personally is anti-Semitic or racist. People call people racist when they want to restrict, as he does, illegal immigration. They say that is being anti-immigrant. This has been said time and again in Britain. It was one of the aspects which caused people in the context of the Brexit vote uh, to rise up and say, we are perfectly entitled to want to restrict illegal immigration. We are perfectly entitled to want to restrict dangerous extremism. That does not make us racists. To, 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 to throw around these extremely serious accusations of racism and anti-Semitism, when, as you know, Simon, anti-Semitism is now at epidemic proportions on campuses, on liberal campuses, under the aegis of liberal professors and liberal university vice-chancellors in America and in Britain. It is a scourge okay. that is going on. That is under a liberal administration. Simon, quickly well, answer Donald, that. Uh, I don't necessarily disagree with that. I just, well, I, I want to say that Donald Trump retweeted a neo-Nazi tweet. It is not a coincidence that David Duke, the imperial wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, is exhilarated with rejoicing about the advent of Trump, who is his man. Simon. We, will, we will see, Melanie, mark my words, we will see attacks. There already were anti-Semitic graffiti last night. We will see race crimes, hate crimes explode now, Simon probably Sharma. in the period of transition. This is Simon, not alarmist. They've been exploding under a liberal the president. They've been exploding under a liberal president. They've been exploding under perfectly decent administrations in Britain. Can I just ask one last one, Simon? Simon, just one but last question, because I'm, I'm interested. I want your reaction. Some people on the Liberal side say we need to listen to concerns, we need to hear what Melanie's saying and we need to yield something. We need to put up better barriers against illegal immigration. We need to give something to people so that they feel their borders are protected and their identity and patriotism isn't sneered at. Do you believe that or do you believe this is a moment to fight, resist and make a noise? No, well, I, th I think the, I, I believe in both, actually. I think Mullen is quite right. And I think actually one of the pathetic failings of the Clinton campaign, it failed to develop a way to talk to people who felt there was a connection somehow between their country, as they thought of it, being taken away and an unequal recovery from the Great Recession. Um, and that, that is a sort of extremely serious problem. But I also believe um, that, you know, the Republicans, uh, Trump's, Trump owns the Republican Party. They control all three branches of Congress. We'll have an extremely far-right Supreme Court. It will in all likelihood reverse Roe versus Wade. Somehow, the Democrats in their shattered confidence have to find a way to provide a vision of the United States and the promise of America, which is not of a peace with far-right radical authoritarianism, because that's the president they're going to get come January. We need to leave it there. Thanks both, uh, Simon Chalmer, Melanie Phillips. Thank you.